Hey everyone, welcome to 6.5 on the road from Dell Technologies World 2024. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. We've had some great conversations over the last couple of days. Michael Dell walked on stage yesterday to literally thunderous applause from tens of thousands of people. And one of the things besides AI, which you may have heard of, that was really evident in the keynote that we saw yesterday was the, the strength of Dell's partner program and the, the depth of it as well. We're very pleased to welcome Christina Day to the program, DRAM Product Marketing at Samsung Semiconductor. It's great to have you, Christina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. So you guys had a great session yesterday moderated by my esteemed colleague here, which was, was so much fun. You really kind of talked about the emerging memory products for AI. Um, I was in the audience, packed house. What are kind of the, the top three things that you think the audience took away from that to share with our audience here? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, what people really took, uh, took back was that there's a very high demand in HBM DRAM, as well as even SSC, because all of these three solutions are critical to the role of AI, because AI is generating so much content, and all of these three products have to work in conjunction with each other for the AI to work. Yesterday, I mentioned, I mentioned AI, Dave likes to joke um, about have we, how many times have we said that term in, in conversations, but lots of news on AI yesterday in the keynote. Um, talk a little bit about the partnership, the longstanding partnership that Samsung Semiconductor has had with Dell and the symbiosis that you have in hel helping it to really fulfill and manifest its AI ambitions. Sure, absolutely. As you heard yesterday in the keynote, Dell is an end-to-end solutions for their customers. And Samsung is here we collaborate and partner together. We have to understand their challenges and their workloads, their data intensive uh, requirements. So all of our solutions, we partner together and understand those challenges and help solve them for them, for the data access capability, for the storage capability. So Samsung's leading memory technology and innovation really helps out. Okay, let's get down to it. I want to hear some. I want to hear. I want to, I want to hear some cool numbers. What's the state of the art now in terms of what you're delivering today, and what's and what's coming down the line that you can share, uh, specifically in the DRAM and DDR space? Yes. Where are we now? I mean, are we what 4K of 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 RAM on the motherboard? Is that about right? No, we're no, talking about we're talking about <laughs> how, how in in general purpose servers from average of 400 gigabytes of DRAM space for general purpose servers. Okay. Now we're talking about generative AI servers. We're talking about terabytes of DRAM. And how big are those individual modules that you're, that you're shipping now? So um, now we can um, ship 256 gigabytes of a memory module. Okay, so that would be, so, so a DIM, dual inline memory module, W meaning there's two of them, there's a pair of them together always or no? No, not always. Okay. Um, so but the single unit is 256 at this point. 256, correct. So, so four of them is a terabyte. That's right. Of memory. <laughs> yes. Not storage, not that's, SSD. Yes, no, of DRAM memory, yes. Okay. So um, you're, you're looking at about up to two terabytes of memory that is used in AI servers now. And then with SSDs, with storage, it, um, it was an explosion of data that is generating right now. So you and I, I'm sure you played with ChatGPT, and I have too, oh, yeah. right? And you're expecting that quick response yes. and the imagery um, that, um, that uh, everyone's looking for. So all that content has to be stored somewhere, but um, uh, not only is it on DRAM, but it's also on the SSD because certain content is not needed to be accessed constantly right. or consistently. So, um, but there's so much content and it has to be stored on SSD, which now people are requiring 128 terabytes of SSD space. What, what are some of the ways memory is impacting high density DRAM? I, I think of speed, latency, but walk us through some of those key improvements that what you're talking about is delivering. Yeah, so the CPU core counts are increasing and the next generation of core counts, um, 
uh, Samsung memory is also supporting that. So uh, as our innovation gr um, continues to develop, we have to support all of those core counts and the high bandwidth requirements and the performance. So we are certainly um, developing and progressing in that way. We talked about referencing the session that we had that was a lot of fun, by the way. Um, we talked about this concept of the, the memory wall, uh, the idea that uh, despite the advances in memory that you provide us with, thank you very much, uh, there's still a disparity between how hungry these XPUs are and how quickly memory can deliver. Now, part of the way you address that is through high bandwidth memory that's more, that resides more closely to those XPUs. Uh, what, what about next-gen PCIe technology? Does that help us? How would you characterize the current state of the art when it comes to the memory wall? Yeah, so we're also addressing with new technologies such as CXL. Um, CXL memory is, it has a PCIe interface and it's in the E3.S form factor. So it actually fits into the SSD, the normal slots you would put into an SSD. So that memory wall, yes, certainly all this content, can, it, you can hit a memory wall. So CXL helps to expand or extend that memory uh, capability. Now, is that, is that for expanding the aggregate amount of memory that an individual server can access, or is there a shared component to that? I, I don't know the answer. It's, uh, is, does CXL allow pooling of memory to be shared by servers? Or no, not? actually, people are looking to expand the memory. Okay, so um, it's just, just physical, because you can have it located a little bit further away. That's right. Because we're talking centimeters of difference. Sure. Uh, you can have more because you can physically put more, exactly. more memory in. Any idea of what the what the like what the projected numbers are there? I mean, you're talking terabytes of memory, right? Yes. I don't. Know. Yeah. It's a, no. No. It's, it's it's a big number, folks. Yeah. But it is it is mind boggling when we start talking about the amount of actual memory and how fast the performance is. Well, and the impact of memory on the success of AI is incredibly impactful. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, so um, if you look at uh, ChatGPT adoption, um, it took five days to reach a million users. So huge success and it's continuing to grow. Um, and if you think about it, memory is a critical component of AI. Without memory, there is no AI. Right. <laughs> so absolutely, it's a huge success. And um, as AI continues to grow and, and develop and innovate, uh, Samsung's there, we're constantly innovating as well. Um, so yes, and if you think about the new technologies that are coming such as autonomous driving, um, that takes about one to eight petabytes of content a day. So think about all the um, memory that is required to not only process that content, but also store that content. When you guys showed that slide yesterday. You were just referenced this in terms of chat GPT reaching, what, a million users? A million users in five, five days. days versus Netflix, which was, what, 1,700 days? 1,700 days. days. So the yeah. speed, and it's just been only about 18 months since chat GPT was launched, and it's been revolutionizing everything there. But you also talked about the speed. We have this expectation in our personal lives, in our business lives, that we can access anything we can transact, it's gonna be right there when I want it, when I need it, and it's gonna be relevant to me. I think that expectation isn't going away. I think it's only gonna get worse, not worse, but good. the demand will increase for being able to deliver information, content, relevant content like that. Absolutely. Or faster. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, and I'll go back to the example of autonomous driving. It's instantaneous, right? You're, you're, you're driving automatically without steering the, you know, the wheel, without even pressing on the gas pedal. That's instantaneous um, content that is being delivered to you. So think about the, the high bandwidth and the performance that is required to, to, to uh, automate that. Well, in talking about autonomous driving kind of makes me think of, of criti the criticality of that, that speed. It could be life and death situations. Same thing with impacts to other organizations like healthcare, life sciences, for example, that are, are where information is needed to be relevant, accurate in sub-seconds. 
Yes. Um, yeah, it could be a life or death situation. <laughs> so absolutely, yes. So does the DRAM that you work with, does it generate power or does it consume power? So it consumes it power. It consumes yes. power. Is that a problem, Christina? That is power going to be a constraint moving forward? A lot of people are telling us that. <laughs> what are you doing at Samsung to address this? So this yes, power? power is certainly a humongous challenge. And we had a cloud service provider tell us that in 20 years, it took them to reach uh, about 500 megawatts of, of power. But in two and a half years, they're going to reach two gigawatts of power. So absolutely, power is a huge constraint and a huge concern. And what we're doing with Samsung is we're constantly innovating. So an example is the DRAM. We introduced the 32 gigabit DDR5. Um, it's a mono die. So we, you don't have to stock, stack the memory to reach higher capacity. Um, that saves up to 40% of power. Oh, wow. That's significant. Which it's translates significant. into less latent Le heat also, yes. right? Less, less uh, power consumption, uh, more efficiency, better bandwidth. If, you, if we have a crystal ball, or sometimes I like to say a magic eight ball, <laughs> <laughs> and we look into the future of, of memory technology innovations, we talked about the demand, we talked about the speed at which we've gotten there. What do you see in, in, in the, on the near horizon? Oh my gosh, there's so much. I mean, um, I'm excited for the future, I think. AI is just going to continue to grow. Um, there's, it, 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 anything's possible. Yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah, and I, I feel like we look at it at the horizon and it just keeps going and going right. and going. And there's probably problems that we haven't even thought of yet yeah. that we're going to be working to solve very soon. Yeah, and if you think of- Which is exciting. Uh, yeah, ChatGPT, it, it just took everyone by surprise. Yeah. I, and in the future, I think there's going to be something else that's going to take everybody's by surprise. It is. What are some of the, speaking of Horizon, some of the next things for the Samsung Semi-Dell relationship? Um, yeah, so we're continuing to innovate and grow and develop together. Um, we are looking at things such as um, processing in memory or PIM. Yes. And that basically integrates the processing and the memory together so that it reduces the data movement, which is good for um, performance and bandwidth, as well as uh, lower power consumption. I was gonna say energy consumption yeah. has got to be a benefit there. Yes, absolutely. Excellent, well, Christina, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for joining us and explaining what you guys are doing with Dell, the future of memory, its impact to AI, its impact to DRAM. We appreciate your conversation. Thank you so much. All right, for our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6.5 on the road from Vegas, baby. This is Dell Technologies World 2024 coverage. Stick around. More great content coming up next.